So the bottom of my boat looks like this. My work area looks like this. It's gonna take several minutes to get it melted. It came out being like a blue fleck. Here's some of the finished product, guys. Out here, just railing on them on the homemade baits. What is up, M Ever? So excited for the video today. You guys know I love to go out and do a lot of fishing. I spend a ton of time on my boat back here, a ton of time bank fishing. You guys also know I love to make my own tackle. Today we're gonna kind of combine both those things. I've been going on a bunch of trips lately, and because of that, I, I spend a lot of time in my boat fishing and, and catching fish and using baits and throwing them on the floor. And I don't spend a whole lot of time cleaning up because I have so much limited time in between these trips. And so what happens is I end up with a boat full of freaking plastic baits. Now to some people that might be a big mess and a big waste throwing those plastics away, but we actually are going to do something today that I do with a ton of my soft plastics. After I use them, they're torn up, you can't put them on the hook anymore. We're gonna melt them down and shoot them into new molds and make brand new baits with them. And then we're gonna head out to the lake and hopefully catch some daggum slaunches on them. So this right here is pretty much everything you're gonna need for this process, obviously, Step one, we're gonna need a ridiculous amount of soft plastic lures. The more, the better. We're gonna have to get this sorted out. I'll tell you how I do that in just a second. Microwave to melt them down. Of course, you're gonna need some do-it molds or any type of soft plastic molds. I love these do-it molds. We've been on a good big worm bite, a 10-inch worm bite, and a good flipping bite. So actually, I have multiple of these molds. We can shoot those all at the same time. I only have one of the 10-inch worms, so two at a time for this guy, as you guys can see. We're gonna need a glass Pyrex dish to, uh, to melt those guys in. Please do not use a piece of crap dish. You will end up shattering in the microwave. That's a problem. We need some clamps. I'll show you why in a second. And we absolutely need this heat laser sensor gun. I'll show you why that is in a second. Almost forgot, we're gonna need an injector too. You can hand pour them into the molds with uh, the Pyrex guy, but uh, injector is gonna help a ton. Step one though, before we get going, we need to separate all of these soft plastics into similar colors. Now we're not gonna do anything too crazy today. We're, we're simply gonna go with the two most effective colors in my area right now, and really two of the most effective colors of all time. We're gonna go with some shades of black and blue or, or, or blue fleck or something like that, so darker shade lures, and then we're gonna get a bunch that are green pumpkin or watermelon hues, a more natural color, because generally in fishing, those are really the only two hues you need. But I had an idea that came to my head where I would actually go to Walmart or whatever tackle store and buy all the $1 baits that are pretty much worthless and then melt them down and make some badass plastics with those. If you guys wanna see that, I, I've had some requests for that video, but if you wanna see that, go hit the thumbs up. If we get this thing to 5,000 thumbs ups, I will make that video next week for you guys. As you guys can see, only a couple minutes of sorting and we have a nice pile of dark colored baits. A lot of purple, black and blue style hues. And then a nice pile of natural style baits. Really, you know, a bunch of different colors mixed in there. But it's all gonna turn out probably green pumpkin-ish, watermelon-ish, got some flake. You can make some really cool colors with a conglomeration of different stuff. We'll see how it turns out. Next step, get these guys put into the Pyrex, into the microwave. Also, wanna let you guys know as we get these loaded up into the little Pyrex dish, couple safety precautions. One, we're dealing with very toxic melted plastic. So I have a very well ventilated garage, wide open, terrible lighting, but wide open. Also, we're dealing with 350 degree melted plastic. Do not do this without very thick oven mitts. Trust me on that, you don't wanna to go to the damn hospital. We're gonna get these guys put in here, and we don't wanna burn the plastic. That's gonna be one of the biggest things is not to burn the plastic. So even though we're gonna pop it in this sketchy looking microwave right here, I used to melt my plastics, and it's gonna take several minutes to get it melted. We're only gonna do like one minute increments to get it going. Because if we put that in there for three or four minutes, like we're gonna need to over a course of time, there is gonna be smoke everywhere in here. The plastic's gonna be completely destroyed, smell terrible, the fish, you're not gonna catch anything. So after two minutes, we basically just have hot, unmelted plastic. Keep it rolling. So while those guys are melting, we need to clamp together some of these similar molds. Like I said, I have like, uh, we're gonna do two each of uh, this guy right here, which is the flipping hog. Flapping hog? It's flipping hog, something like that. Very, very good flipping bait. So we got two of those guys. We're gonna clamp those together right next to each other, like so. We got our 10 inch worm mold, as you guys saw. Badass curly tail worm. And actually, looks like we got three of these. It's called the DD Gill, nice bluegill looking bait. We probably won't pour any of these in. Well, we might pour some in black if we have enough 
plastic left over, but yep, two of those and three of those. All right, we got three of those guys. Clamping is super, super underrated and important. Something you don't think about until you pour plastics, but it's basically impossible to do this without clamping them. The plastic just does not form properly. Okay, good, here we go. Four minutes in and we're starting to look like something. We got some plastic melt. This is another super high-tech piece of equipment I forgot to tell you guys to bring. That is a spoon. You're gonna need a spoon. Hopefully you guys have access to spoons. If not, I don't know what to tell you. That color actually looks super good. It came out being like a blue fleck, June bug style color. That's perfect. So even though it's melted, we're shooting for about 350 degrees is the temperature you wanna pour at. And that's where a little heat gun is gonna come into play. Reading is, not bad, 292, 297. So we need to get that a little bit warmer, obviously. We'll throw her in for about another minute, see where we're at. But so far, no smoke, we don't got any issues. Next time you see it, probably ready to go. All right, 352. If you can see that. So we're gonna pour it into the injector. You can draw it up, but from doing this with Brennan at Do It Molds, he said he always pours it in there. It's just a cleaner process and you get less overflows. So we wanna get that. This is an eight ounce injector. We wanna get it as full as possible. You can tell that's a little toasty, so we don't wanna waste any time. We need to go directly to the molds. We're gonna shoot a little bit of excess right there. Shoot it through tight until it comes out the top on all these guys and I really want that color for the worm so yep not enough for the third one but hey we got two of these and the worm so I'm happy with that so these guys have been sitting here for I don't know probably three or four minutes They're cool enough that we can open them up and look at them and would you look at that they poured really really freaking Nice, let me show this bait to you guys. I'm freaking excited about this, guys. Looks like one of the tails didn't form completely. That's because I think it kind of ran out of uh, pressure, but that color, I mean, that's the color I've been catching them on, blue fleck on the big worm. That looks freaking badass. Hopefully you guys can see any of that. Really good looking color. Check out our two gill baits. Those poured awesome this one did anyway so yeah there's what our bluegill flipping bait is supposed to look like this next round let's shoot some into the flapping hog that way we have some different types of flipping baits all right here's some of the finished product guys we got these uh these little dd gill flipping guys which are basically bluegill profile baits we got some flapping on the arms and stuff and then we got these flipping hogs i like to actually cut this so it has some flap to it that's a really really good flipping bait though and then we got a bunch of uh what we've been catching on lately the old 10 inch worm I, honestly i'll probably throw this the majority of the time out offshore because that's where the big fish are right now and we're trying to catch some old bigs on some homemade baits after a while after you melt the plastic several times it's pretty much no longer usable so we're going to let that solidify and then rip it out of the uh the pyrex there i actually have another pyrex we'll use for these lighter colored baits but not too bad we turned a pile of dark baits into a pile of usable baits those were wrecked gonna be thrown away whatever and now we have baits we can go out and catch fish on them same process for these natural colored baits i'm really excited to see what these guys mixed together are all going to look like but honestly like i can't believe how easy this process is all you do is you throw it in the damn microwave and it gets to the point where you can form any new baits just you don't even have to add anything to it it's crazy okay round two of the natural baits i'm excited to see how this turns out look at this mixture as it is right now we got pretty much green pumpkin watermelon with a lot of blue red purple gold we got all types of different flake in there looking like a damn bluegill in there of course you can also add any different colorants or glitters or anything that do it molds or any other company sells for that matter but um i'm just gonna leave it as is we want to go straight from the the wrecked bait to the melted bait to the made bait to the catch fish today that's our goal
All right, let's see what these guys ended up looking like. I originally wasn't even gonna make any 10 inch worms uh, in this color because I've been catching so good on this dark purple color. So this color looks so freaking good that uh, I had to make some. Oh yeah, look at that. I don't know if you guys could see that very well. That looks real good. We'll have to get that in the sunlight for you guys to see. Oh, Mr. Flappin' Hog guy. That looks really good. That's pretty damn good looking, if you ask me. I like that a lot. And then, yep, as I suspected, 10 inch worms turned out really freaking good. It's like a watermelon -y green pumpkin, like I talked about. Blue, gold, red, every type of flake under the damn sun. All right guys, you saw how freaking easy the process is. We got two colors made up right here from baits that were in my damn garage. How freaking crazy is that, guys? Now all one step left to do is go out to the lake, use these baits right here to catch some freaking sludges. Let's do it. Which water lands am I gonna wear today? Mmm, decisions, decisions. Oh, it looks like it's gonna be sunny all day. So let's go with blue mirror and then we're fishing. So let's wear a wraparound style. We got the Millican, the Hasket. Let's try the Hasket. I don't even know if I've worn the Hasket blue mirrors yet. Yeah, let's do that. So as many of you guys know, I launched my very own sunglasses brand called Waterland um, with my buddies Casey and Garrett Sobzak, the owners of Six Sense Fishing last week. And first off, I want to thank you guys so much for all of you that went out and picked some up. The support has been ridiculous. You guys have been already blowing us out of freaking product. I'm going to keep doing shameless plugs because I'm freaking, I'm just so excited about these sunglasses. Like we told you guys, we've literally been working on these for over three years. It's been a lot of time, a lot of hard work, and a lot of testing to get the perfect combination of lens, uh, frames, price. One thing I want to ask you guys is if you have purchased some Waterland sunglasses or you plan to in the near future, please just take a quick screenshot of your order or even better yet, take a picture of yourself wearing the glasses you guys have had some awesome feedback so far and every single per person that purchased I want to thank you and uh, throw your post up on my Instagram story my Facebook story just to let you guys know we are so thankful that you went out and supported the company links gonna be at the top of the description right down there if you want to check out some new Waterland sunglasses we're gonna retail them at $149.99 for the launch sale that's still going on right now, they're 25% off. And then if you use promo code MF10, you can actually get them for about $100 right now. It's the cheapest you'll ever gonna be able to get them forever. So go pick those up. And uh, of course, send me a screenshot of your order or a picture of them on your face. I'm gonna go rip some damn lips now. I'll catch you guys at the lake. Another horn fish. Where is the bigs? We're gonna find the bigs today, guys. Just, just wait. Skiing them, skiing them on the worm. Come here, bud. Come here, bud. Come here, bud. Found the damn school baby guys. Every baby guy we catch is one closer to a dock. Get out of there. That's a little better one, maybe. Yep, definitely a little better. Not a giant though, but better. Better, he's just got a big mouth. Yep, he just got a big mouth. Where are the damn bigs? You know what though? Out here, trailing on them on the homemade baits. Cannot hate it. There goes my worm. I don't care. I can make more. Fun though. Rip that worm up off the bottom and thunk. That was a good example of not needing to just jack a fish when you set the hook with a big old worm. Sometimes it's good to just take up all that slack, lean into them, especially I'm throwing this on a 7.5 heavy, so this is a bigger rod. Nice long rod, that's a better fish. Not any gigantors yet today, but I get excited sometimes when these fish freaking, especially this time of year, they're so active. They just crush that big worm on the fall or they just freaking take off running with it. It's almost better to just pop it up, you feel that bite, tighten all your line, and even tighten a little bit past where you usually would with like a jig, where you're to the point where that you're just straight up pulling on the fish. You definitely wanna do that, lean into them. Lean, reel, and jack them. Get out of there. Be big, just be big. It's not big. 
He's not big. Another worm fish. Nope. Oh, that was easy release. Deal. Is this one big or small? He don't even know yet. We're back at the spot where we started. We're about to do more 10 inch worm damage, I think. He's strong, whatever he is. He's, oh, he's hooked in the corner of his mouth, that's why. Regardless, decent little two pounder. There we go, there we go. Just one on the little swing head. Jesus, that guy left the freaking water. I don't know if you guys saw that, that was cool. Switched up to the swing head. Look at that, he's barely hooked. Swing head with the uh, flapping hog. Another two, two and a half pounder. These fish are well fed. They're honestly, they're a little finicky today. They, uh, they're they taking some finessing, repeated casts of the same areas, and really working the spots over and finding the, the freaking juice. Most of the fish I'm catching, they're in like a very, very tiny specific area on these spots, a spot within a spot, if you will, because we got a whole high spot that comes around these brush piles right here. And for whatever reason, they're right on the corner of the very first one, fished all the way around it. And it was the same, same way in the other spot. They were kind of in between the brush piles. I can't catch them in them super heavily. I'm sure I could flip a couple small ones up, but seems like the better quality has been out here. I actually did catch a uh, like four, four and a half pounder, but camera was off because I don't know how to make YouTube videos apparently. Is it a big one? I think it's a big one. It's a better one. Oh yeah, solid fish. Come here, bud. Freaking fish in here need to start eating some of these damn gills and stuff I see all over the freaking place. They are skinny. But they're biting, so that's fun. Woo, freaking hot out there. It's my favorite time of the year though. Absolutely freaking whacked them today. All on baits that we went and poured ourselves from old recycled baits. I paid precisely zero dollars for the baits that I made today. Just took a little bit of time, had a freaking blast doing it. And hopefully it just goes to show how easy it can be. Again, 5,000 likes. I'm gonna go do a dollar bait store challenge where I go to the dollar bin at whatever sporting goods store, pick up a bunch of plastics and melt them into some different soft plastic bait molds. Like I told you guys earlier, I would love if you'd go pick up some of these Waterland sunglasses. This company we just started and launched last week. For all you guys that went out and purchased some of these Waterland sunglasses or for those of you that are going to purchase them, please, please send me a screenshot of your order or even better, a picture of you guys wearing them so I can repost them on my Instagram story, Facebook story. Feedback has been phenomenal so far. I'll link them down below and uh, we wanna hear what you guys have to say moving forward. But let me know if you wanna see more challenge videos like this one. I will catch you guys very soon.